So what we're going to do here is that we're going to measure focal lengths. And the only one that we're going to predict is the one for the diverging. And I'll show you how to actually see if the diverging and converging lens have the same uh, focal lengths. And what we're going to be looking at here is that we're going to measure the focal length of a lens. And John does a really good job of portraying this. And you're going to need both focal lengths that you're going to have to measure. So I'm asking you to do one for the 100 millimeter or 10 centimeter. There's one for the 200 centimeter millimeter lens here. And you know what? I just realized I have a mistake. I put here, I think I need, oops, not there yet. Where is it? It's right here. I think what I need here is that I need, no, I just need two graphs. So this is actually, so this thing is incorrect. It should be positive 200. Okay. Now I, I noticed that a lot of people says, hey, you didn't give me the location of the Google Sheet. By the way, we did it for lab one, lab three, the video presentations, it's one Google Sheet. It's always the same for the whole semester. So this is lab seven and that's why we have this Google Sheet right here. So remember, we're always doing the same thing here. So what we wanna do here is that we're going to follow John's thing here to measure experimentally what the confidence interval is for the focal length of the 100 centimeter, 100 millimeter focal length. So that means everybody has to make a measurement and then put it in. And then on part two, we're going to predict the focal length using the lens maker equation. Now, Here's kind of the key thing here. This is for a diverging lens, but we're gonna measure it for a converging lens. And I'll show you how we can translate the, uh, the two focal lengths together here. So we're actually going to use part 1C where we're gonna use this data to actually, you know, see whether the predicted focal length is correct by the lens maker equation. Then we have a single converging lens and then we have a two lens system. Okay, so what I wanna do here is that I wanna talk about part one. Part one is a really kind of a funny thing for me. And the reason why it's funny here is that Many years ago, when I got hired to work here at Cabrillo, they had a question that apparently 10 out of 12 PhD applicants could not answer. And I said, wow. Luckily, they, had, they asked a question that I could answer, but you know, it, it kind of made me laugh here when I found out later on that so many people with PhDs couldn't answer this question that I want you to be able to roughly estimate what the focal length of a lens is. And the way you do this here is that you literally hold a lens, you know, from some light source and you focus it onto a piece of paper. And if you can focus it onto a piece of paper, then you know that's the real image and therefore I could then go in and I could estimate what that focal length is. So that's one of the things that we're doing right here. And another thing here is that people don't realize that to get the focal length of a lens, you need effectively an infinitely far object. It has to be the distance has to be much, much, much larger than the, dis the focal length size compared to the object size. So what I wanna do here 
is that I want to kind of go in and try to do this here. Okay. And so what I want you to do here is that I'm going to go in and share my screen with you is that I want to set up part one. So let me see my OneNote. And so let's look at part one. We're going to measure the focal lengths of F100, which is the focal length of a 100 millimeter or 10 centimeter lens and F200, which will be 200 millimeters or 20 centimeters. That's what we wanna do. We wanna measure focal lengths here. And the key thing when you go to measure focal lengths, it's about having an object that's supposedly infinitely far apart. Now, here's what I recommend that you do here. So what we're gonna do here is that I'm gonna say, so, so for the first part, I'm gonna say um, A here, I'm gonna say measure the focal length using overhead lights. So if you're using overhead lights, I'm assuming that that light source is gonna be fairly far away. So what I mean by that is that, let's say that this is your overhead light right here. And it could be can lighting, it could be just a light source here. And what you're gonna do here is that you're gonna take your lens here. So that means you're gonna take your lens right here. And then what you're gonna have here is that you're gonna have a white sheet of paper. So let's say that this is your, this is your table. And then right here, you're gonna have a white sheet of paper. By the way, if you have a white envelope, that works just fine. In fact, a white envelope was perfect because I was essentially using this because as a screen, because it's nice, it's the back of an envelope that has stuff inside, it's nice and stiff. So you could use an envelope or you could use a sheet of paper. It does not matter here. Now, so remember here, this is your lens right here. What I want you to do here is that I want you to move. So now what you're gonna do here is that you're going to move up and down the lens until an image is formed on the white sheet. And then what you should do here is that you should have some way of measuring it. So here's where it becomes, it might be an issue here where you have, I used a, a, a meter, not a meter stick, but I used a ruler that has at least 20 centimeters. And I sort of like, I held one in one hand and then I held the, the, the meters, this here, let me show you what I mean by that. So what I did here is that I held my scale up and then I just moved it, I put it flat on the table, and then I just moved the lens up and down until I got an image. And then I sort of like said, what was the that? And you know, what was that distance here? And you're gonna see that it's gonna be roughly about 
10 centimeters. Now the important point here is that the light source is not super far away. Okay, it's not super far away. And so what happens then, if I go back into my sheet here, so what I want you to do here is that in this case, define this measurement as F of A, okay? Define that measurement as F of A. Here is the important piece now. Now, um, use a dark room and pick something distant. Like a, a like a tree, a house, something really far away. And what you're gonna do here is that the way you take your lens this time, this time, what I want you to do here is that try to pick a flat spot. So let's say that really far away from here is some tree. So in the past, if you were doing this at Cabrillo, I would tell you to pick a tree by Highway 1, which is, which would be, you know, a couple miles away. But something that you can really see far away. Or let's say that something's really far, like a house across the street or something really distant. And then what I want you to do is that I want you to do this here. What I would do is that I would take your tape measure. Okay, here's your tape measure. And what I would do here is that I would stick it, I would tape it onto the, um, onto the table. And then what you're going to do here is that I would get a little piece of clay. Okay, I, so I have a little piece of clay and then what you're gonna do here is that get your 100 millimeter lens out. And remember, always put that clay on a piece of paper, right? So remember that clay is on a piece of paper. So remember the setup as before. It's the same setup as the laser and it looks like this. So I put the lens onto this piece of clay. Actually, let me grab the lens. So remember these lens here are gonna be in these white boxes here. So I'm literally setting it like this on the clay. So now I'm gonna put this and now I'm able to slide my lens back and forth here. So, excuse me, do not put your lens, do not, just put it down. And then what you do here is that I come in with the feet, my envelope and I literally hold it flat on the table and then I slide it back and forth, go about 10 centimeters, and then focus that distant tree or house onto this envelope. So now if I go back to here, so now what I'm having here is that I'm having my envelope. Let's say that this is my envelope. Right, so if I look at this envelope here, so now what you're gonna do here is that you're gonna move this thing back and forth, right? So you move white sheet 
back and forth until an image is formed. And then when you form an image, so that means if you were to look at the image of this, when this is focused here, you're gonna see that you're gonna have, because it's a real image, you're gonna get a backwards tree. That's when you do that here. And then this guy, I'm gonna call F of B. And this is the focal length with a very distant object. Okay, and so what we need here is that we need good values for these things. So what do I want you to do? Go do the following thing here. So compare, let me be careful here. I call that F of A. So define this measurement as an estimate. I called it F of A, sorry about that. This is an estimate. Just estimate this thing. So for the 100 centimeter, right, 10 centimeters, see if you're getting about 10 centimeters. So now when you actually are doing a, a distant object, that should be our F. This is our best measurement. of the focal length. So what do I want you to do? Once you have that value, now let's go. I now set up a table. However me many measurements go in there and I call this, everybody has the exact same lens. Go get the average. You're gonna get the, right? You're gonna get the average, I'm, I'm sorry. You're gonna have twice the standard deviation of the 100. And then, right, you have the average minus two sigma plus two sigma for the 100. Go plot this thing, right? You're gonna have a curve. And because we're using this data to do all our labs, we should then come in and set up our curves here for the 100. Just because they say it's 100 doesn't mean it's 100. So you should set up a curve for the F100, right? F minus two sigma, F plus two sigma. And then go repeat the, the numbers here for what? F200. The reason why I'm writing millimeters is because it says millimeters on the container and I just didn't want people to get them confused. And then you're gonna have a separate curve and the separate curve is gonna be, let's say it's gonna look like this here. And then what we wanna do here is that this guy's gonna tell us about our confidence intervals. Right, so this is going to be F200, and again, I got the exact same type of thing here. So now, that's part one. So now what I want to do here is that I want to go show you the video that John does. Now remember, he does this slightly different than what I just talked about. I would prefer that you use a really distant object. Okay, so let's, let me go change my share here. And I have, so if you click on this link here, this is John's video. So let's go listen to him. It's, it's a short video, but it's, it's well done. using 
outside the window as my faraway object. And that makes a nice bright object, but I am not outside, I'm in sort of a darker kitchen so that I can see my screen better, just like in the movies you have a dark room so you can see the screen better. So one way, so we want to be able to measure the distance between the lens and the, and the image. And one way you could do that would be to put, say, a ruler on right next to the lens and measure from that. In my case, that's a little hard because, because the window is higher in my lens, the image ends up down lower. So I put my lens at the edge of the box here so that I could, the image could go down lower on, on my envelope. And now I need a way to measure the distance. And so I can put like my ruler, you know, say down here on the table. And have my envelope kind of go like that and measure the distance. When I get it nicely and focused, and then I can look down on my ruler and see where it is. <clears throat> You'll be creative and do whatever works for you. Obviously, there's going to be some uncertainty in how perfectly straight up and down I'm holding this and how where exactly it's in focus. So just like everything, there will be uncertainty. That's what we're used to. And I don't recommend that you copy exactly my measurements back here. You'll probably think of something more elegant and more accurate. But, and remember, we're measuring from the center of the lens in all of our measurements to either the object or the image. Now I'm going to talk about the part of the lab where the object isn't that far away. So this part of the lab that he's talking about is lab, it's it's part three of the lab. Okay, this is part three of the lab, which I haven't talked about, but I'm going to play it nonetheless. Right, objects, so I close the windows, make it a little darker in here. Kind of the darker, the better, it's good, as long as you can see what you're doing. And I've got my cell phone just leaning up against the glass on the counter, and I'm going to make it bright. I've got my lens with the clay on the counter, and you can put it whatever distance the lab says to put it, you know, the object away from the lens now instead of five or ten focal lengths. And then I've got my envelope screen again, and I'm just going to move it around until I see a nice focused image of my cell phone screen. And again, my cell phone keeps making itself dimmer. There we go. So get it nice and bright. And there's a nice image. And you move it around until you find the best focus. And you can measure that. You can measure that distance with your ruler from the lens to the screen to where the best focus place is. And think about what the uncertainty is, too, of course. Okay, the last thing I should. Oh. Okay, now this is the trickiest part of the lab right here. Okay, this is part two. I'm going to show you is how to use this diverging lens. Uh, it's it's concave in the middle, so it makes light spread out. But being glass, it reflects a little bit of light. Most of the light passes through it. That's why you can see through it. But uh, some of the light bounces off glass as you are aware, and so we can use it as a mirror, though it'll be not a great mirror. So I'm going to put the camera down here and pointing at this shiny window. You want an object that's very bright, but you want to be in a dim space, like always, right? Okay. Bright movie screen, but a dim room. Okay, and then I'm going to take my envelope and I'm going to take my my lens, which I'm using as a mirror. Uh, and the tricky part now is if I put the screen there, it blocks out all the light. So you have to move it. You have to move the screen sort of out of the way so that you can shine some of the, reflect some of the light onto it. Uh, it's sort of down, I'm, I'm putting my screen a little bit lower and I'm pointing my mirror. There's some pretty contrasty trees outside. So I'm, if I move this lens back and forth, I can get an image on my screen that I can't exactly see it. It's pretty small and dim, but I can tell when it's focused. It's blurry, focused about there, and then it's blurry again. So that's where I can now measure the distance between my mirror and my paper and get the focal length of that mirror, which will be different than the focal length of the lens. Okay, that's it. That is without any doubt, 
the trickiest part of the lab. And so what I want to go do here is that I want to go and show you what we're going to do here. So um, what we want to focus on is that what we're going to do here is that this is part two of the lab. And we're going to use the lens makers. There's no equation. And we're going to apply it to a diverging lens. Now, this actually requires some understanding of mirrors, and that's something that we have not touched. Okay, so what you're going to do here is that here's what we know. What we find here is that when light is incident on a diverging lens, there is refraction and reflection. So it turns out that about 96% of the light is refracted and 4% of the light is reflected. And what you're going to see here is that when I look at this diverging lens, it's going to look like this here. So if I look at that 4% of the light, what you're seeing here is that this light re is the, the, when the light comes in, this is the first surface. So this is surface number one right here. And of course, this is surface number two. So when I'm looking at this thing, what we're finding here is that some of the light is going to get reflected. Some of it gets transmitted. So here's the thing. The 4% of the light here does this thing here. It comes in. Okay. It comes in. And as it comes in, what we're going to see here is that it's actually going to get reflected. So if I look at this light here, this follows the law of reflection right here. And again, we will get to this, I believe, tomorrow. So what we're seeing here is that this is the reflected light. So this is that 4% piece here. And what you'll see here is that, so if I look at this guy, what I'm saying here is that I'm saying this, that the reflection The reflection is due to light being reflected as if it was a a mirror. So this 
here tells us about the radius of curvature here. So if I want the radius of curvature of this guy, that focal point here, so this would be the distance. So if I look at this guy right here, this distance from here to here tells us about the focal point of a mirror, not of a lens. But what we're finding here is that the mirror reflection tells us about the radius of curvature but we need the radius of curvature to calculate the focal length. But here's the thing, the focal length of a mirror is actually one half the radius of curvature of that thing here. So that means if I measure the focal length for this mirror reflection, then I know what the radius of curvature is for this guy. So John showed you at the very end right there how to get the focal length of a reflection. So you take the lens and you, you let the light reflect off of the array in such a way that you get what that distance is right here. So what that means here is that this is what I want you to do here. So what I want you to do here is that I want you to measure the focal length of the mirrored surface of the diverging lens. And so what you're gonna do here is that the way you do this here is that you're gonna do what? You're gonna hold up and focus a distant object by reflection. Okay, so once you focus, maybe I should write focus big here. And then what you want to do here is that then measure this distance. And I'm going to tell you, this is, this is hard. Okay. And then what the way I ended up doing it here is that I ended up doing what? Well, I did exactly the same thing that I did up here. I put a tape measure down. I have, so if I look at this thing again here, let me bring this over here. And I, I think this is real tricky here. So what I have here is I have my negative 100 millimeter diverging lens. So what I did here is that now, if I have my distant object, let's say that this is my tree here again. So remember, this is my distant object. John used the window in his house. And so in this case here, what you're gonna find here is that this image is not uh, inverted, actually it is going to be inverted because you're capturing it, but it's a real image for 
a lens here. So you're looking at the light, right? So you're seeing, so the light source is coming from where? Here's my incident light and you're getting the reflection. So this thing here is the reflection. And John put it on top of a box. I had it just on top of my table with the tape measure. You know, I taped it down to the table so it was nice and straight. And then I just moved my envelope back and forth, but you gotta have a dark room in order to see that. I found that the best way to do this here is that I had my curtains, I just had a little opening in the curtains. So only a finite amount of light was coming through. And then I got a very good image on that. Okay. So here's what I want you to do here. What I would do is that now I'm going to set up a table. Here's F of mirror. And I'm going to say this is side one. So what I ended up doing here, by the way, what did I do? This is side one right here. How about if I just do this? And then I have F of mirror. Side two. And then all, all I would say is just do a couple of trials just to get a sense of this thing here. Okay. And so then what I ended up doing here is that I, once I got that, then I ended up getting here the average radius, which is 2F. So what I ended up doing here is that I got and then I, not the average, then I got the radius, which is 2F, and then I took the average of these guys here. So what do I do? Hold up the divergent lens, focus it, get the reflection, get that radius of curvature, get the focal length, and then from there, go get the radius. And then what do I want you to do next? I would then say is flip the lens and repeat the process. So now we have the focal length. We now have the radius of curvature. And what we should find here is that we expect R1 to be equal to R2 because it's a symmetric lens. So now what I'm going to do here is that I'm now going to predict the focal length. So the way I'm going to predict the focal length here is that I'm going to set up a table. Okay, so you now have value for R1, right? So that means I'm gonna set up a table that reads now, here's my lens. I have my diverging lens, excuse me. I have my diverging lens. I have my, my R1 value. I have my R2 value. Now I have my focal length. So that means when I look at this thing here, this is what I have. I know what my R1 is because you just measured it in part two and oh, excuse me, in the previous part, I know what R2 is. So now, here's, my, here's what I have here. So, so make sure 
you used appropriate signs. So remember, remember the sign convention from today. So when I look at the sign convention from today, you know that if this is my lens, anything that lands where? If the first surface is over here, you know that that's gotta be negative. If the surface lands over here, we know that's gotta be positive. Use the right sign conventions and calculate what that focal length is here. Right, so now that means here that you're using to predict here. So now when you predict, you're using this guy to use that guy right here. Predict it. Now, check. Combine the F100 and F minus 100 lenses together. So in other words, if I have a lens that looks like this, okay, and if I truly have the exact same negative focal length, like this, what you're gonna find here is that any light that comes in, you should get no refraction of light. And that implies then that the focal length of the 100 millimeter magnitude wise should be exactly the same as the focal length of the negative 100 meter. And in fact, the converging and diverging lens should be, have the exact same focal length. So now check this out. You have your distribution curve. Here's your dis distribution curve for the 100th thing. So this guy now operates right in here. So that means I have a distribution curve for the 100 millimeter curve here. So now check to see if F negative 100 millimeter falls within the F100 plus or minus two sigma curve. If it does, it's consistent. If it doesn't fall, it's not consistent. Okay? Okay, so now that we have that, let's go to the next piece here. So if I go back to the lab and just show you what I'm talking about. So now we've talked about one, we talked about two, now let's talk about three. So what we're doing here is that we're gonna use a single converging lens. And this time you can see that we're using the 20 centimeter lens. So we know what that focal, what that 20 centimeter lens is. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up an optical bench, which is really, we don't have an optical bench, but we're gonna set it up as if we had an optical bench. And one of the things that you're gonna find here is that we wanna check to see whether this 20 centimeter lens that you have is actually 20 centimeter lens here. And the, what, the way we do this here is we put the object at 2F. So let's go set this up on the screen here. So I'm gonna go back to my OneNote and now we're gonna look at part three here. We're gonna talk about a single
converging lens. So supposedly you've measured the focal length of this guy. And this guy should be 20 centimeters. So the first thing that you wanna do here is that you wanna check to see if this value is correct. Now remember, not all of these lenses are 20 centimeters. So this, the average of the 20 centimeter lens should come from this value here. So if we make multiple measurements, we should do that. Remember, so from part one, use F 20 centimeters from the average value. Because they're not all 20 centimeters. Some could be 20.5, some could be 20.1, one could be 19.9. .9. So that's why we're getting that average value right there. So the way you check to see this is you do it this way. Is that take your lens that you have. What you're gonna do here is that take your cell phone. So on your table here, so then set, set up your cell phone 40 centimeters from the lens. So let's say that here's your table right here. So set up your cell phone. And remember, it's important to have some, something bright there on your cell phone. So here's your cell phone. And then remember, I have my sheet of paper, right? I have my sheet of paper with a little bit of clay. And then I squish the lens into it so that it's vertical. Right, so this is my lens. So what I'm gonna see here is that this guy's at F, then this guy right here is gonna be at 2F. You know what, I'm gonna move that cell phone value. And this guy here is the cell phone. Now, now on the other side, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have F and then I'm gonna have my two F out here. So what you wanna do here is that you wanna set your screen. What's the screen? For me, it was the envelope. So then what you're gonna do here is that you're gonna set your envelope right here. So this is your screen. So what you should see here, if, you, if it truly is um, 20 centimeters, you should then form an image right here of your cell phone. So I'm saying that this image, so what I'm saying here is that the image of cell phone should be 40 centimeters on the other side. If it's not there, remeasure the focal length of the lens because you really, really need to do this. Okay, you really, really need to do this. You need that, the correct focal length. Now, here we go. So what we wanna do here is that the we want to predict the object and image distance. Okay, so here we go. We want to predict the object image distance 
given m equals to minus two and your focal length equal to positive 20 centimeters. So note, you have two equations, two unknowns. So my hint to you, you have two equations, right? The thin lens and the magnification equations. And two unknowns. S, S prime. So let me be careful here. I'm going to call these S theory, S theory prime. So predict S theory and S theory prime. Now set up your cell phone lens and measure S experiment and S prime experiment. And compare theory versus experiment. And then once you have that, then draw a ray diagram of the situation.